everybody. On this episode, I want to talk about one of the most interesting and outrageous games connected to Nintendo. And that, of course, is Conker's Bad Fur Day for the Nintendo 64. Now, this game came out at the very end of the console's life in North America, March 2001. To give you guys an idea, the last game of the console came out in October of the same year. The N64 was nosediving in sales and attention at this point. You could find its greatest hit series in bargain bins at stores like Toys R Us and EB Games Real Cheap, around $20 brand new. The PS2 was already in full force with endless critical praise, and the Xbox and GameCube were on the threshold of release also. This game just fell through the cracks. All I had was an N64 until 2002, and I wasn't even aware this game existed until around 2010. I just never heard about it. Now in most cases, if you hear nothing about a game, it sucks hard. But this is truly an exception to the rule. It received excellent reviews, however it just wasn't properly backed by a steady advertising campaign and its release time was awful. The PlayStation 2 was the word of mouth among gamers in 2001. The N64 got slapped with a kiddie console label. It was considered to have some good party games but a shitty controller and not worth people's time anymore with new technologies like DVD and online play rising to the top. It's a 3D platformer with tons of lowbrow humor, violence, sexual innuendo, with an overlapping Monty Python-ish cheeky kind of tone. It's nuts. Yes, horrible pun intended. So if you're wondering what the hell was wedged in this case earlier, yes it is exactly what it looks like, a condom. Condoms were given away as a promotional item. Nintendo was okay with giving away condoms, beer mugs, and autographs from Playboy models to promote this game. That Nintendo golden seal of approval is starting to shine a little brighter in my book. They had full trust in Rareware, however due to the mature nature of the game, it was only mentioned once in Nintendo Power, and received little, if any, advertisement in retail stores. However, even with the game's silence on those fronts, a ridiculously raunchy commercial was produced and a U.S. college campus tour throughout the southeast took place, stopping at 20 campuses. I assure you I'm not making this up. Here are some pictures. and a totally drunk guy. In addition to condoms with a squirrel's face on them, apparently there were plenty of urinal mats too. Well speaking of the squirrel, let's see how Conker came to be. He first started out as a disposable cute character in Diddy Kong Racing, which transformed into an acorn hunt on the GBC for toddlers. Then another spin-off would follow on the N64, similar to Banjo-Kazooie at a lower difficulty for more toddlers. But the guys at Rareware were criticized for once again copying Mario's platformer structure, so the production did a giant 180 and Rare decided to do something entirely different to stand out from the rest, just as they had proven before with games like Donkey Kong Country and Goldeneye. And thus Conker was born parody of a children's cartoon who loves public indecency and intoxication, as well as foul language and lewd behavior in general. He also doesn't seem to be phased by extreme violence and has a strong attraction to the opposite sex. A perfect pitch for a character. What's not to love? Pretty much the entire basis of his character revolves around alcohol and boobs. The guys at Rareware had to be under the influence of something good. This commercial is my defense of that statement. The sheer balls of this developer. I salute them. And God bless you, Conker. Too bad you'll never see another game again, but I'll go into that later. Heading back to the merchandise, I'll show you some shirts I've got, then take a couple minutes to go over the guide. I'm not positive, but from what I've seen, all three of these shirts were given away on the college tour. The first one being the most popular. The second one's my favorite, Conker sleeping in a toilet. The shirt was also included in a retail kit given to stores in large cities. They fetch a heavy price on eBay and I'll most likely never have one, but it's cool to see as this prescription package came with candy shaped pills. This last shirt I have smells like beer. Not kidding, whoever wore this was most likely at one of the colleges. I refuse to wash it though. Conquer lives through the stench of dried vomit and hops. Yeah, that's definitely beer. So on to the guide, this is one of the most well thought out for the console. 
Because it's M-rated, they could jam even more sex and fart jokes in here. What a relief. If you're a man-child, you'll appreciate this one. Most guides I find nowadays just have a walkthrough in the controls. Boring. However, I strongly suggest if you do get Conker's Bad Fur Day, also pick up a copy of this guide. It's got some extra material in it that complements the game nicely. I don't want to spoil the guide too much, so I'll just flip through and show some of the highlights. Meanwhile, as my past self flips mindlessly through the pages, I'll keep talking for your listening pleasure. Okay, so I've only played this game for the first time in the last few years, and it instantly became one of my favorites of all time. I'm talking on the top 10 from NES to PS3, but at the same time it's a very stylized experience, and as you can guess by now, it's not suited for everybody's tastes. By no means made for a wide target audience. This is one bizarre game, especially for Wearware, a UK based developer. What I mean is that most weird shit comes from Japan, and this isn't. But anyway, for a kitty friendly developer like Rareware, this was a dive right into the deep end. No water wings, no parental supervision, the kitty developer would either sink or swim. Unfortunately, it sank. Rareware just took too big of a chance on creating an M rated game for a children's console on its way out. Not to say we can't enjoy it later, but in my opinion, the failure of this game contributed substantially to the end of the developer's talent. About one year after release, many employees of Rareware were either laid off, transferred, or left after poor sales, and eventually the company was sold off from Nintendo to Microsoft, and it's been mediocrity ever since. Rareware was one of the greatest game developers to exist, creating many classics for Nintendo, making them astronomical amounts of money, and in my humble opinion, this was their last gem. Many would argue that Star Fox Adventures was the last great game by Rareware and that the transfer from Nintendo to Microsoft didn't affect the developer's talent. Rather, it was a series of restrictions by Microsoft on what the developer could do or not do. However, if you look at Star Fox Adventures, a majority of the game had been developed by the old Rareware under Nintendo years earlier as the Project Dinosaur Planet, and the later final product would only be this project refinished to suit the Star Fox franchise, which it did poorly and thus was the main criticism. There have been many articles and interviews discussing the disbandment of Nintendo's powerhouse Rareware. I'll put one or two in the description below if you're interested for further reading. Also, if that Conquer commercial from earlier in my video is still bugging you, the full TV spot will be in the description below too. I know, I know, an implied handjob to promote a Nintendo game? I had to watch that twice as well. But enough of that tangent, let's hop back to the other. Most likely, if you're watching this video, you have already heard about this game and subsequently know its fate and why it will never get a sequel. But for those who have never even heard of this game before, or the developer Rareware for that matter, the reason this game is such a big deal in my mind is as follows. It would be the first and only time Nintendo would closely associate to an adult porn empire and use sexual paraphernalia and alcohol to promote a game. They've tried to sugarcoat this, believe me, but it really is that bland. Nintendo's second and third party developers would lose a significant amount of trust from the giant, thus diminishing creativity and outer party support for the GameCube. But let's move past the history now and finally get to play this game. So at the startup screen, we see more mature content advisory warnings, yada yada yada, and the protagonist of the game ripped apart the N64 logo with the chainsaw. No biggie. Then onto the campaign, our adventure starts with Conker paying homage to one of the most delightfully messed up movies in history, Stanley Kubrick's Clockwork Orange. Now I'm not quite sure how one should approach this game, but an open mind is definitely recommended. The plot goes all over the place, it's just best to stick with our squirrel friend and go along for the ride. That being said, there is all sorts of new comedy reflecting other games and movies, so even with a wide sense of humor you might miss a few jokes or gags. Stylized game. Once again, up my alley, but may not be for others. Okay, let's dig deeper into the mechanics. I've discussed the style of gameplay a bit already. However, it's unique to platformers in this era of gaming, and it's uncommon to see in the seventh generation outside of a few Nintendo throwbacks. The core gameplay consists of running and jumping as you make your way through various obstacles. There's a slow pacing. Actions have to be timed precisely or else you'll probably die on your first mistake. This game has brutal falling damage. You'll lose a life after barely any drop down. The violent yet comical splatter reflects the game's tone perfectly. It's like some sort of demented Saturday morning cartoon divorced by divorcee alcoholics. 
While the animated gore is funny, there'll be some disturbing moments where you'll be shocked at the lack of taste considering the atmosphere. This reaction may be a personal bias of mine though, as I grew up with other QC Kid Rareware games that have this exact animation and there's just none of that innocence here. In any event, the dark humor will make you grin. Controls handle at the top of their ability for a 3D platformer. Rareware had plenty of experience creating this style of gameplay before, with titles like Banjo Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, and Jeff Force Gemini for the console. At specific moments, Conker obtains weapons for his disposal, and the game becomes entwined with a third person kind of shooter. The weapon mechanics are fun and chaotic in multiplayer, however, in the single player campaign, some of the fun is taken away when you begin to screw up again and again, dying and dying. Because of this game being specifically made for adults, the challenge does show. If you've never played a 3D platformer before, or if it's been quite some time, you're going to get your ass handed to you in certain segments. There were two or three areas that really irritated me because of that awkward run and gun control scheme, most notably being the Matrix lobby shootout and the Saving Private Ryan final escape. I must have died at least 30 times each before I completed the objectives. In reference to the controller itself, make sure while playing to use one with a light blue joystick. The controls are quite sensitive. When I first began I was using one that had previously been worn down through hours of Mario Party and the difficulty goes up like you wouldn't believe. Use a good first party controller for bad for a day. The gameplay really needs it. Hey, right there. How you doing? Hi, hi, how you doing? Come on, come in now. Yeah, sit down, what do you want? Oh, this, this place oh, really smells. Ah, uh, well, she wear like f***ing dung beetles and you roll the poo around, f***ing knows what's for. Oh, really? If you want some, you want some poo? Um, uh, uh, Alright, get your f***ing ass in there. There's these f***ing cows. Get them in there. Get them for crap. And I'll make you the ball of poo. And you can do what the hell you like with. Go on, on your break. You still here? F*** that. Oh, charming. Moving on, the graphics look fantastic for the N64. In my opinion, this is the best the system has to offer. From a technical view, it's the most well-rounded while venturing from level to level. Also, the game cartridge was the largest produced in terms of memory. 64 megabytes in size compared to some N64 games only containing 4 megabytes. The recording software I've used to store the footage doesn't pick up the videos as well in person. On a CRT television, this could be confused for an early PS2 release. Edges are smoothed out, textures blend appropriately, and characters even blink and move their mouths to the dialogue. Little things like that are taken for granted nowadays, but if you were gaming in the 90s, you'd know watching cutscenes meant staring at polygonal models, robotic and all their behaviors. Characters here are lively like cartoons should be. The team at Rare focused highly on their presentation, as this would most effectively drive the mature content. That brings up my next point, the sound design. Few N64 games have voice yeah. acting from start to finish, and this is easily the greatest quality. Due to the large size of the memory within the special cartridge, there are around two and a half hours of cutscenes, plenty to keep a steady pace and keep your interest. The bizarre voice acting and sound effects mash together pretty well. You can hear the game's age with some foggy overlap, but keep in mind this game really pushes the console to its limits. The game has an ending you'll never see coming. I don't want to give anything away for those who haven't played it, but the final hour takes a step back and scoffs at the 3D platformer and all its standards. After you finish the story, as far as replayability goes, there's a multiplayer which is like a crossbreed between Banjo Tooie and Goldeneye. To wrap the review up, this is the Ultra Dolphin. Thank you so much for watching my video. And if you're itching for more Nintendo 64 related goodness, head over to n64forever.com. There you'll find tons of info on the console and a board of active members willing to share stories, collections, gaming news, and more. Once again, I appreciate the views. Please subscribe if you want to see more N64 plus GameCube and nostalgia fueled frenzies. I leave you all now with a final dose of Conquer. May Rareware live on in our hearts and conquer in our minds.